In this video, I will be showing you how you can customize the cart page for your WooCommerce website with Elementor. And I will be showing you how you can customize the cart page using the free version of Shop Engine. At the moment, this is how my cart page looks like. It looks very crowded. You see that on my cart page, I have some cross sell products, which makes the whole page look very clumsy. So let's see how we can make our cart page clean and simple to use by the end of this video. Hello guys, this is Swadik here at Digo Pages Web, where I do web tutorials just like this one. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. That said, let's jump into the video. So to customize my cart page, I go to the back end of my website. Then I go over to plugins, click on add new. Under search plugins, I search for shop engine. I have shop engine here by WP Med. I've already installed and activated the plugin, so you can go ahead and do the same. And after installing the plugin, you see shop engine right here. I'll just hover on it, then I click on builder templates. And this brings me to an interface where I can create all templates that are available in the shop engine plugin. So I'll go ahead and click on add new. I'll give my template a name. I'll call mine default cat. Next, I drop down the arrow and choose CAD, and I'm going to go ahead and set it as default. Next, we have three sample designs to choose from. You can use blank or pre-made designs. For this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and use blank, and I'll save the changes so that I build everything from scratch. My template is created. Next, I'll go ahead and edit it with Elementor. And this will quickly take me to the shop engine widget section where we have shop engine general and shop engine cards. You can use all these widgets in your template, but for this tutorial, we are going to be concentrating on the shop engine card widgets. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and add in new section and I'm going to choose a single column section. Next, I go back to widgets and the first widget I'm going to use is the card table. So I click on it and drag it inside my section. And this pulls in the card table, which also gives us some control right here. So first of all, you can deal with the buttons. If you want to hide continue shopping button, that is what we have here. You can go ahead and toggle it on. You can also go ahead and hide clear all button by enabling this. Perfect. I will leave them disabled for now. Next, we go over to content. And this is where we can change the text on our card table. So if you want to give a different name to the product title, you can enter it in here. And the same goes for the rest of the fields. I leave them as they are for now. Next, I go over to style. I can change the background color of my table header to match with the colors of my website. So to do that, I go to background color. I will just go ahead and choose one of my global colors like this. And I can also go ahead and change the text color so that it will stand out. So I go to text color and I'm going to go ahead and choose white. Perfect. You also have the option to change the typography, but I leave it as it is for now. Next is table body. I want my product title to stand out a bit. So I go to text color and I'm going to go ahead and choose my global colors. So I choose this. You can go ahead and customize the rest of the colors as you wish. Let's also take a look at product image. So in here, you can go ahead and decrease or increase the width of your product image like this. I leave it as 80, the default. You also have the option to change the colors of your quantity fields, but I leave them as they are. Next, I go to table footer. In here, I'm going to go ahead and change the text color to white. And I'll change the background color to green. Perfect. Finally, you have the option to work with global font. I'm not going to go into that. Now, before I move to the next section, I want to provide space at top and at bottom. To do that, I click on edit section right here. Then I click on advanced. I'll just give it a margin of 80 at top and at bottom. Next, I go to widgets. Then I'm going to go ahead and pull in the card total. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and insert a double column section like this. And I'll give it a margin of 80 at bottom. I go back to widgets and I drag in the card total. This pulls in the card total, and you have the option to change the typography, title color, price color, and so on. I leave everything as they are. 
the only thing i'm going to work on is check out and update button i'm going to go ahead and change the background color to match with the colors of my website i can also change the hover color to match with the hover colors of my other buttons so i go over to hover and i'll go ahead and choose a global color i'll choose team color 3 perfect if you are finding value so far, please give this video a thumbs up, it does help me out, so that the video will be suggested to more people on YouTube and also benefit more people. Alright, let's continue. The next thing I do is go ahead and insert my final section and I'll choose a single column section. Maybe I give it a margin of 80 at bottom just to be consistent. And I go back to widgets and I'm going to go ahead and grab the cross cell widgets. And this pulls in some cross sell products. From here, you can decide if you want to enable or disable slider. You see that my slider is enabled, but the products are not sliding. And the reason is that slider doesn't work if cross sell products and products to show is smaller than or equal to slides per view. I go ahead and disable it. I don't need it anyway. You also have the opportunity to disable plus sale, sale price, as well as cut button. But I'll leave the cart button enabled so that users can easily go ahead and add products to cart from here instead of going to individual product pages to add to cart. You can also customize how many products you want to show. At the moment, it is set to 4. You can make it 5 or 6. You can also go ahead and customize the number of columns. But I leave them as the default. Next, I go to Advanced. And I have the opportunity to order my products by date title, price, and what have you. At the moment, it is set to random. Let's see how price will come up. And you can also go ahead and decide if you want to make it descending or ascending. Descending means you have the highest price down to the lowest. And ascending means you have the lowest price up to the highest price. And I think ascending is cool. You can go ahead and choose whatever you want based on your shop requirements. Next, I go over to style. And I'm going to go ahead and align everything to the center. And the last thing I'll change here is the Add to Cut button. I'll go ahead and change the background color to green to match with the colors of my website. The last thing I'm going to do here is go ahead and add a title on top of the cross cells. So I go to widgets, then I grab in the heading element, and I go in here and enter my text to tell my customers that they may be interested in any of these products. I don't need the text to stand out this much, so I go over to the HTML tags, then I can choose H5 or maybe H4. H4 will do. Then I go ahead and update my page. Now, if I go to the front end of my website, this is how our checkout page used to look like. Now, if I go ahead and refresh the page, we will now have the new look and feel of our checkout page. Perfect. So that's it on how to customize the cart page for your WooCommerce store. Now, if you want to learn how to customize the single product page for your WooCommerce store, I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. You can go ahead and check it out. All right, guys, I hope you found value in today's video. If you did, kindly hit the like button, subscribe if you have not yet subscribed, and also hit the notification bell so that each time I post a new video on this channel, you will be the first to know. Keep watching. And I will see you in the next one.